of you have probably seen the movie by Adam Sandler called Click. And in that movie, he had a magic remote control. He could fast forward real life, he could rewind real life, he could pause real life. And I don't know about you, but I'd love to have that right now because I would speed my way through this pandemic. The reason I'm even bringing this up is because I think it would be great if we could have such a device because I could put each and every one of you in the NHL. Doesn't matter if you're 12, beer leaguer, whoever you are, if I had that remote control, I could put you in the NHL today. Here's how. Imagine this scenario with the Washington Capitals. They come in on a line rush, they pass over to Ovechkin on the dot, he takes his one-timer, you press pause. You get out to the proper depth, you get lined up perfectly on a stick, you get a razor-ready stance, and you fill up that box. You're going to stop 90-94% to 94 of the shots just by being in the right spot soon enough, so when I press pause and then to play, you're going to stop that puck. Now, 90-94 to 94 seemed like an oddly specific number, let's just go with it. I could take the world's worst goaltender, Stevie D, for instance, and put him in the NHL today with this remote control. And obviously, I'm pulling your legs, Stevie. There's still a chance. You could still make the Toronto Maple Leafs. So at the end of the day, understand one thing. The knowledge of angles, the ability for you to get in the middle of that shooting triangle, the ability for you to get optimal positioning is going to allow you to play at the higher levels, regardless of how good you are at stopping the puck. And there's another thing to bear in mind. There's only four things that can happen on any shot outcome. When a guy shoots the puck at the net in that scenario that we're talking about with Ovechkin, one of four things can happen. One, he can miss the net. That does happen a lot when goalies have pristine positioning. Number two, he could score, which he's done significantly for his whole career. Number three, he could hit you with it. And number four, you could move an arm, a leg or something, and move on the puck and make a reaction save. So there's only four things that are going to happen in those scenarios. Miss the net, goal, he hits you with it, or four, you move to make a save. And if you think about it, out of those four, three are in your favor. And they all come back to being pristinely positioned and understanding angles. <music>played the position has given up bad goals because of poor angle play. I really want to drill down this week on angles. We're going to do angles 101, angles 201, and angles 301 in all three videos this week. And this is going to help you become a much better goalie at stopping pucks with perfect angle play. The key is understanding the geometry and all the stuff that goes into behind the scenes of properly playing angles. There's four things we want to start understanding when we're talking about initially understanding angle play. Here they are. Square, triangle, out, and aerial. We've all heard the term square to the puck. What does it mean? Square to the puck simply means facing the puck, meaning both your shoulders, your hips, and your toes are facing at the puck. And in my opinion, I think sometimes that term is misused. It often is said that it means you're standing in the middle of the net. Doesn't mean that. Being square simply means you're facing at the puck. The backup goalie could be square to the puck all night. The referee could be square to the puck all night as long as their shoulders, hips, and toes are perfectly positioned facing at the puck. So understand one thing about squareness. It has nothing to do with the relationship to the net. Being square simply means facing the puck. So let's take a look at a couple things here. That right there is the old school net. And if you remember back in the day, they used to have a little spike in the middle if you're that old or old like me. And a guy named Mark Howe was back checking and slid in their feet first and unfortunately had an issue. Skates hit the net, net ramped up, and that little spike hit him you know where. Almost killed him. It was about an eight inch cut in there and he literally almost died. So now we don't have that when we're playing, we just have that smooth, uh, simple base. So, talking about triangle, there's something called a shooting triangle. And it goes from the puck to the posts. If you shoot a puck here, it misses the net. If you shoot a puck right on that line, it hits the post. And if you shoot it just a hair inside that, it goes post and in. So as a goaltender, we're really only concerned with this area inside the shooting triangle. Now, we can't see that shooting triangle. It's invisible, it's on the ice, it's always there, but we can't see it. So we have to be able to create that shooting triangle in our mind. 
Now on that same topic of the shooting triangle, it changes dramatically depending on where the puck is. Sometimes guys get in the slot, which is the most lucrative place, and we see how wide the shooting triangle is. On the poorer angles, the shooting triangle gets much thinner, tiny. In fact, when the puck's just ahead of the goal line, the shooting triangle is so small, it's less than the width of a mini stick net. Now, can you imagine how bad of a goaltender you'd have to be to get scored on with full goalie equipment on a mini stick net? So understand one thing about the shooting triangle. It gets more thin the closer the puck gets to the goal line. A mistake some goaltenders make is they line up on the body instead of the puck. So if we consider this the stick and the guy skates, you want to line up on the puck. This is where the goaltender needs to be perfectly facing at the puck. What happens a lot of times is goaltenders will make the mistake of lining up on the guy's body. And when you do that, when you're facing over here, you leave all of this space open. So as a goaltender, when you're playing angles, square up, line up on the puck, not the body. Another thing about shooting triangles is that when the puck is behind the goal line, there is no shooting triangle. There's no way a guy can score from right over there. He could fire 10,000 pucks and he can't score. Now, has there ever been in the history of the NHL guys score from there? Of course, because goalies don't hug the post appropriately or maybe misplay with an RVH and they bank it in off you. Understand that if the goalie's not in the net, they can't score from behind that goal line. You wanna be positioned so you're accepting the attack that's gonna come from out front, not the guy that's in the corner. Now I want to show you a little bit about squaring up. So when we look at the net here, and there's the shooting triangle, this goalie right here, he's dead in the middle of the shooting triangle, but he's not square to the puck. So you can see how they're two independent terms. He's in the middle of the angle. He's perfectly positioned in the middle of the angle, right on the square line, which is in the middle of that shooting triangle, but he's not square to the puck. To be square to the puck, again, your feet and your shoulders have to be facing right at the puck. He's perfectly square to the puck. So understand this, being square to the puck means facing the puck and you always want to be in the middle of that shooting triangle. Now, when a guy passes the puck here 60 miles an hour to a teammate, there's a brand new shooting triangle created. And what allows us to get repositioned over there is our mobility and our athleticism, our skating ability. So one of the key things to playing angles is being a great skater so you can always get in the middle of that shooting triangle. Now, we need to talk about the next thing, which is the word out. Another way to talk about it is depth selection. So if you think about it, there's our shooting triangle and there's our goalie that's this wide. If he stays deep in the blue crease, this is the amount of room you have to score on him on either side. If he comes out to challenge, he covers more net. And in fact, if he came way out here, he completely smother it. But there's diminishing returns. You can't challenge too far. Or people will pass the puck or skate around you. So how do we know how far to come out? We're going to talk about that further in Friday's video on situational positioning. But as a general rule of thumb, if you're positioned at the top of that blue crease, you're likely going to have the proper amount of depth for most situations. There'll be some times you can challenge more, sometimes you have to challenge less, but generally speaking, if you're getting scored on when you're at the top of the crease, it was probably a pretty good shot, especially if you're on angle. I want to talk to you about a friend of mine. I probably only have three or four friends in the, in the world, and one of my best friends is named Fat Tony. Look at Fat Tony, he's a goaltender. We know that the net is six feet wide and Fat Tony is four feet wide. Very, very wide. Now, look what happens here. Because he stays deep on the goal line, we've got some room beside him here. Now, Fat Tony went to goalie school and he understood the importance of depth. So now he's gonna step out a little bit and he's gonna take his four feet and by getting his four feet just to the top of the crease, he's basically covered the room beside you. So the importance of coming out and challenging and getting some depth is that you completely eclipse the low net and people can't score beside you. You cover the whole shooting triangle. Now, one of the weaknesses 
of Tony, besides the fact that he's four feet wide, is that he's only three feet tall. So look at this. We got a side view of the net. And last year, I got quite the honor. I was named one of the top 8,000 goalie coaches on the planet, but I was named the number one drawer of goalie angles and goalies with stickmen. If we look at this from the side, we're going to look at the aerial angle. There's another triangle created. It goes from the puck to the crossbar. Now, if you elevate a puck on this angle here, it goes over the crossbar. If you put it right on that angle there, it's the crossbar. If you put it just a hair below that, it goes crossbar down. So think back to Tony. I said he's four feet wide, but only three feet tall. Since the net is four feet tall, and this is Tony here, there's a foot of room above him that you can shoot it. So when you stay deep in the net, not only do you leave room beside you for people to hit, you leave room for uh, people to hit over top of you. So when you're a small diminutive Smurf-like goaltender, you gotta make sure you come out to the top of that crease because if you look at the case of Tony, he seals up the top shelf by coming out. So back to our rule of thumb. Let's get your butt out of the crease. Let's not give up goals back in the blue swimming pool where all the sharks are. Get out to the top of the blue crease. And as the season progresses, every time you get scored on, take a look down. And if you're in the blue crease, you likely should have challenged a little bit more. So one last thing we want to talk about today is puck adjustment. When you've got a guy shooting in the NHL, they are super adept at picking corners. But do you know what they're better at? They're better at adjusting the puck and then shooting it. A classic example is Brett Hull. He would do the drag snapper. And in his case, in most cases, NHL goalie has perfect angle play in many, many situations. But Brett Hall would take the puck and he would drag the puck laterally and then shoot it. And he would do that in the blink of an eye. And by him moving the puck laterally before shooting it, he creates himself a new shooting triangle. And look what he's done. He's created an opening here. Now, guys don't shoot the puck where it lays for the most part at the highest levels. They're skating diagonally, they're moving laterally, they're dragging it, or maybe even they're pushing the puck to create a new shooting triangle. So understand one thing, as great as NHL players are at picking corners, the thing they're even better at is puck adjustment and then putting it in half empty nets. That's the key to NHL goal scoring right there, puck adjustment and then letting missiles go. Oh, 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 oh,